Welcome more gamers to 2 Plus Tough. My name is Doug and today I wanted to try something a little bit different. You see, I get lots of requests, people uh, asking me for my opinions on my, what I'd like to see GW come out with in the future. And one of the things that I had thought about was Nurgle Endless Spells. And so rather than, you know, wish listing a whole new faction, and there's a whole lot of complexity there, I thought that I would kind of daydream about something that I know fairly well, and that is the Maggotkin of Nurgle. Now, um, I will be honest, I'm going to show you three Endless Spells that I came up with. These are not hard and fast rules. Um, a lot of it's kind of like... I have an idea, but I don't know how to word it, so, you know, rules writers can, can go nuts on these. But the truth is, what I'm really thinking about is the, the actual physical models of the Endless Spells and how I kind of want them to bring the Garden of Nurgle to the realms and what that would look like. And so, to me, that's the coolest part of Endless Spells is, frankly, just the way that they look on the board. I think that's the same for a lot of us because... Most of their roles aren't fantastic, but the models are incredible and used for conversions and things like that. So, without further ado, we're going to dive into the uh, War Scrolls that I made, um, partially using language and, and that kind of stuff from various other Endless Spell War Scrolls and kind of compiling them to get some effects that I think are quite nurgly. So, we'll go ahead and we'll jump into the first one. So we're going to kick it off with the Volatile Bubo. So essentially what I'm looking for here is something that it's super gross, but bear with me. My idea for the model is that it, it, it functions kind of like the Chalice of Usharan, where uh, if you're for Flesh Eater Quartz, if you're not familiar, it's basically um, it's a non-moving endless spell. You put it on a place and then it just has an effect that kind of radiates around it, but it, it buffs a specific faction. Obviously for the um, Cup of Usurin, it's Flesh Eater Quartz, but this is going to be my Nurgle one for uh, getting getting some nastiness on the table. So, kind of walk you through what I'm thinking here. Imagine on like a 40 or 50 mil base, just the biggest, nastiest pimple like a literal pimple on reality and um, maybe they could model it to where like nurglings are trying to claw their way out as if you know once this pimple pops that is like a tear in reality where like nurgles pouring forth that's that's my um my vision of what i'm seeing here okay that like his presence is so gross and nasty that it's literally corrupting reality to the point where it has sores and you know, um, blisters and pimples and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what my, my thought was when I was doing this. Could be some really cool models. It would certainly, I should probably model it just to have as an objective if I'm totally honest, but absolutely thought it was cool. So <clears throat> getting into the rules here, uh, it's a single model. Um, let's see, casting value of six because there's not a lot of casting bonuses when it comes to Nurgle stuff. And so I kind of have to, work around that a bit. Um, most of the spells in the Nurgle Battle Tome, they revolve around the number seven because they wanted to be thematic. The same thing with like uh, summoning points and that kind of stuff. And they've moved away from it when it comes to other Battle Tomes with Chaos Gods, like, you know, Corn loves eight, but not everything in that Battle Tome revolves around the increments of eight like they do for Nurgle. But that's the price he pays for being the first of this new current wave of Chaos books, essentially. So I want to move away from that a little bit. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. Casting value six. Um, only Nurgle models can attempt to cast this spell. Yes, I do know that. That is intentional so that the, uh, what is he, the Vermin Lord can do it as well. Couldn't find the bold feature on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, War Scroll writer I was, I was using. So, if successfully cast, set up a volatile Bubo model wholly within 21 inches. So yes, I am using increments of seven here and there. But the idea basically is none of the Nurgle stuff moves fast, so if I can chuck this thing further forward, it just has a lot more utility. So, uh, as far as abilities go, keep track of the number of models that are slain within 7 inches of this model each turn. At the end of each turn, uh, if the total number of slain models is at least 7, enemy units within 7 inches of this model suffer D3 mortal wounds. So it's just compounding the damage that's already happening. If the total number of models slain is at least 14, enemy units within 7 inches suffer D6 mortal wounds instead. Now I did have a thought at one point about putting in some mechanic to where it adds contagion points. Like if you reach some crazy high number of, of models slain, 
which would essentially be like um, a big unit of Blight Kings going into a chaff wall. You know, they can slice and dice plague, uh, plague monks all day. And the idea here is simply more carnage, more death, bring, you know, by the hand of a Nurgle force specifically, brings, I don't know, damage to the enemy, it corrupts the land. So that's, that's kind of the effect I was thinking of, just, you know, if it's on a big base, seven inches around, that is a good chunk of the board, especially if you can chuck it so far forward. And it just kind of, it, 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 the idea is to set a part of the battlefield where your opponent doesn't want to be dying because it, it'll just cascade, right? If you have a chaff wall or a large unit of hordes, um, getting, you know, seven killed and then D3 additional, it sucks. And so that's the idea. It's a little bit of board control, but uh, the abilities, things, you know, I was on uh, Warhammer Weekly recently uh, talking about Nurgle and, and basically what we want from it. And, and Tom Lines did a fantastic point of saying, you know, in all these other books, there's ways of really interacting with the summoning mechanic, but not in Nurgle. Their summoning is very rigid and weird when it comes to contagion points about who's on what side of the board. I would love an endless spell that works with that. And so this was kind of my, my shoe in of just, what if, you know, I, I wrote this out to be kind of tame, but what if there was an additional thing where you got some kind of contagion point? Because it would just, because they chose to make everything in increments of seven with Nurgle, it would just make some of those summoning things much more possible, right? So that's kind of my thought. So that is the Volatile Bubo. So I do like it. Um, it's, it's super gross. Sorry about that. Went to the wrong screen for a second. Um, but all of these things are meant to be super gross. Now, if there is a huge glaring rules error, you know, like something is not specified, I do mean um, game rounds. I should I should clarify instead of turns, it's not player turn, it is game rounds. So that could have a huge difference. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below for all of these, but you know, like I said before, I'm not a rules writer. I'm just trying to go for the aesthetics of what I think Nurgle could benefit from. So that being said, we're gonna pause here and we're gonna move into the next one while I pull it up. The Putrid Discharge, <laughs> which <clears throat> I was um, I was trying to like Google synonyms for all kinds of gross words and just discharge just kept coming up and I was like, okay, I gotta use it. So the idea for this one, if you look at the um, endless spells for just about every faction, there's always that one that's basically just a magic missile. Okay, that is to say it doesn't, do a ton of extra effects. It usually does just a couple mortal wounds here or there. It's predatory, it moves, and it just exists to kind of project threat. And, and sometimes, like in the case of uh, like the bull for Beasts of Chaos, or what's another great one? Um, the hammers with the Sigmar thing, they have you know some kind of after effect that goes with the damage. But I wanted to do that, just have a basic you know, magic missile. And so the idea for the model on this one is even grosser. But if you can imagine that um, the flaming skull model that they came out with with Mammalian Sorcery, uh, I would love to see that, but it's like like a super nasty like stream of vomit coming out. Kind of like what's what's coming out of the uh, Magath Riders or the Magath Lords, their mounts when they're like projectile vomiting. But on the front of that vomit have like a, gl a grinning face of Nurgle, like that, like the great unclean one's face. Imagine that on the uh, the fire skull thing that's running around. So that's my idea for that. Uh, and the idea is just you literally discharge something super gross, but it has like the spirit and presence of the grandfather himself. And so now it's prowling the battlefield looking to get people to succumb. So. Let's talk about it. Summoning a uh, putrid discharge has a casting value of five. I want this because it, it's very, very tame. It really is like the flaming skull, which I can already see I've missed a, a rewrite here. <laughs> it says flaming skull. Anyway, um, casting value of five, you can set it up wholly within three inches of the caster. So you gotta be up there in the face. It's predatory, you can move up to nine inches and can fly. It's a disgusting missile is the first ability. When the putrid discharge is called into being, it streaks from the caster's hand. Basically, when it is set up, it can make a move. Okay, that's all there is to it. Every predatory spell basically has that. And uh, I forgot to change the name here, but Flaming Skull, after this model has moved, each unit that has any models it passed across and each other unit that is within one inch 
suffers D3 mortal wounds. Now I'm not sure why it didn't save, but it was supposed to say uh, Nurgle units are unaffected because that's the wording that we get in like most of these things, right? It's just, it does damage and then Nurgle units are not affected, which makes the mirror match super sad, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, the last thing here, uh, strength in fecundity. Any friendly model with the disgustingly resilient rule may re-roll dice rolls of one when using that ability while they're wholly within seven inches of this model. Now, the reason I thought about that is because, again, I want to incorporate endless spells that use what Nurgle's good at, like get that flavor out there, but not in huge ways. I don't want to do a plus one because that's massive, right? We've seen that with the um, Wrath of the Everchosen sub-faction, where you can give plus one to a unit of the Plague Drones. It's huge. It is actually really huge. So instead, re-rolls of one, I think is pretty tame. Um, you're not going to see a ton of those units, to be honest with you. Like, Plague Bearers, you don't see massive, massive hordes of them as much as you used to. And the idea is, again, how can I buff Maggotkin of Nurgle but the problem is, um, so many things work in Nurgle. So, like, I, I didn't want to just do, you know, Nurgle keywords can reroll save rolls of one because that's huge, right? Because that's then you're talking about anything that's enslaved to darkness. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it's just his toolbox is so huge. Same thing, plague monks, that kind of stuff. So, picking a specific rule that realistically only things in Maggotkin of Nurgle have, disgustingly resilient was kind of how I went with that. And you can use him defensively, meaning uh, you kind of zigzag him around your lines and keep your Plague Bearer safe, or you can be aggressive, of course, and do mortal wounds. It also puts your opponent in a weird position because now, instead of just turning it back on you, they want it to go away, <laughs> essentially. And so that's, that's fine, you know, um, they can do that. So, I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. Let me know your thoughts in the description below on the Putrid Discharge. Again, the whole point is to just be a simple magic missile. That's what every one of these boxes, they all have something like that. And uh, that's kind of how I wanted it to be. So we're gonna move right into my next one here. Okay, and now we are looking at the Palanquin of Virulence. Now, I'll be honest, all of these were sort of loosely based on existing endless spells. I'm not, you know, an original writer. I took things that I like and I kind of built upon them. And this is based loosely upon the uh, the dais that Stormcast Eternals can get, where they stand on top of it and they get extra spell casting abilities. Well, Maggotkin is a sort of interesting thing where we have a really awesome toolbox of spells, much like Beasts of Chaos, actually. Fantastic spells, uh, but we don't have much in the way of magic buffs or you know ways to get reroll, failed casting rolls. Like we have great spells, but. We're, we're more likely to get them shut down. And because they went with the thematic route of all the casting values being seven or something close to it, it gets a little rough. So I wanted the Palanquin of Nurgle to be something that I imagine it to essentially be, uh, if you've ever seen Epidemius, the model where it's like a plague bearer who's on a chair, who's being hoisted up by a, like a mountain of Nurglings, something like that. Some kind of dais that's the Nurgle symbol when you look down at it but it's being supported by a bunch of Nurglings all standing on top of each other. That's my idea anyway. So, Palanquin of Virulence has a casting value of six. Only Nurgle wizards that do not have a wounds characteristic of seven or more are not part of a unit with two or more models and are not already on a Palanquin of Virulence can attempt to cast the spell. That is wording directly taken from um, the dais. You know, it's so that means you're your, uh, what's it called? The Vermin Lord is not going to be able to do it. Um, that, the seven or more wounds, essentially just means Nurgle Wizards on foot. Like, that's it. That's all it really means. Um, and the not being a part of a unit means, sadly, that the Nurgle Wizard from the Worm Spat, which is the Underworld's Warband, she can't use it, but... I mean, I like her. That's a shame, because I actually do really like her, but I can't fathom how to make that work, you know, in a unit. Anyway, um, and if you can't already be on uh, Palanquin of Virulence, if cast, and this is basically the same thing, just, just set the model up underneath your guy. He's standing on it. I'm going to kind of skip to the flavor text and that kind of stuff. You know, it works the same way as long as the uh, caster is on the battlefield, it's treated as a single model, as what he's standing on. Those are all standard wording, you can go check it out anywhere else. But, 
Model on a palanquin of virulence has a move characteristic of eight and can fly. So now he, your your spellcaster, can be on par with Puscoil Blight Lords, which is a, a part of the army that um, it's great. I love it, but they they move so much faster than everything else. Anything that you try to buff on them, they get out of range four. So having something that can move with them that's not just the uh, Lord of Afflictions would be awesome. If a palanquin of virulence is dispelled, and then, you know, he goes back down to the, the ground. That's all there is to it. Now, as far as abilities, this is where things get more interesting. Putrid Spellcraft. While a model is on a palanquin of virulence, it can re-roll the first spell casting attempt. I kept that tame because, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't want to, like, you know, re-roll all failed spells. Because, honestly, we don't have a lot of spellcasters that can do multiple spells, if I'm truly honest with you. Uh, upon summoning, this model may also move one Feculent Naromaw from anywhere on the battlefield to within three inches of this model and one inch outside enemy models. So what I did there, it's sort of a hybrid mix of obviously um, you're, you're moving a Feculent Naromaw, but the actual distances and measurements are the exact same as, oh my gosh, what's his name? Horticulus Slimex. He allows you to place a Feculent Normal. It just has to be outside of an inch of an enemy model, you know, and that includes terrain, so I should clarify that. But um, the idea is, you know, you actually have quite a bit of, of deployment and that kind of stuff when it comes to Horticulus dropping a Normal. So this would allow you to pull one forward. This means, um, and really what it's addressing, is that I don't like about Maggotkin that you have to place your tree before you choose table sides. I don't like it at all, because I just end up placing it in the middle. It's like, but this could be so much cooler other places. Um, and this allows you turn one, if you get the palanquin of virulence off, you can then move that tree. You can put it one inch, you know, dead in front of your spellcaster, because he can fly over it. But now all of their units near him, because you put the tree, you know, fat wide ways, can uh, use it to slingshot off, get to objectives and that kind of stuff. So it just gives you more options. Um, if the battle moves away from where you had your Naroma, it allows you to pull it over and you can slingshot that way. Really what I'm saying is I love the Feculent Naroma setup, like that it just gives your um, army more options as far as movement and that kind of stuff. But to me, they're far too static. And not only are they static, but how often do you get a chance to use them? Like usually it's the first round or two, but beyond that, not much. Well, if you can move it to wherever the spellcaster is, you can then kind of play out this, you know, slingshot game. And I think that'd be really cool. And of course the next ability there, if a uh, model on a palanquin attempts to dispel it, it's just automatically done. You don't have to roll for it. He just doesn't want to be <laughs> carried around by nerglings anymore. And while a model is on the palanquin, add one to save rolls for attacks that target this model. And that's not really anything special. It's more just giving you some defense because now you're being propped up, you know, in front of everybody. And, you know, neural heroes do fairly well when they have add one to save rolls, and especially if they give themselves, you know, Mystic Shield or something like that. I think this is probably the one where it seems the most interesting that I came up with because um, moving Feculent Naromaz is a big deal. Um, and then adding one save for your wizards. Again, like I said, there's just such a great toolbox within the Maggotkin spell lores that I just don't think we get access to because we don't get a chance to get shut down too easy. So having a reroll is awesome. And as a consolation prize, even if that doesn't work, you get still get to move the trees. You still get a better buff to their defense. You know, I just, I don't know. I, I, I like it. It seems very simple and uh, I think it could be really cool. So friends, those are my homebrew uh, versions of Nurgle Endless Spells, uh, kind of going through what I think that they would visually look like and how that would kind of relate to the tabletop. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, um, these are just rough ideas. Uh, the starting of them, you know, it's a first draft essentially. And so I'd love to hear about it, uh, what you guys think. Um, of note, if you don't like them, totally fine. How would you incorporate things like uh, contagion points or you know give spellcasting a chance so we can actually use this awesome uh, spell lore you know those are the kind of things that I was really really aiming for with these and I would love to hear alternate takes on how we can make those mechanics much more fun and fluid and uh, just have a good time so thank you all so much I look forward to reading your comments and happy wargaming hey everybody I hope you enjoyed that video it was made possible by the folks over here to the left these are my top supporters over here on YouTube and on Patreon that keep this channel going. 
If you'd like to learn more about how to become a supporter and get some cool things in the process like exclusive pictures and interactions with me and get your questions answers here on the channel, go ahead and click any of the links down below or the join button on the community page over on YouTube. Regardless of your choice, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me with this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Happy Wargaming.